Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to share with you 17 cherry fragrances. Now, as we all likely know, right now cherry is having an it moment. So I thought I would go through and share with you 17 pretty great fragrances. There's two in this list that I don't think are very awesome, but the rest are actually quite amazing. So uh, I can't wait to share that with you, but I also thought that instead of just sharing them with you, I would rank them. So we're starting from worst to best. I can't wait to get started, but before I do, if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to hit that button. Join the Weird and Wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And if you already are a part of the community, you know how awesome you are and thank you so much and let's get started so ranked at number 17 prada candy gloss now first of all the packaging is really cute other than this thing reminds me of some sort of weird plume on the top of my head but uh packaging not too bad the fragrance when i put this on i'm not a fan of the prada candy line like not at all in fact I've called them like it would be like a whole group of boring people that come in for a party and they just don't deliver any sort of fun at all that's what I felt about the whole entire line until I tried this one so I tried it on and I'm like oh my goodness that cherry note is amazing like seriously the opening just love it it's this bright kind of candy cherry not overly synthetic but a little bit it just smells sweet and vibrant and delicious and I was so pumped and I'm like this is the first can of like you are not boring like you're fun well guess what she's fun for five seconds and then she becomes extremely boring this one it starts out with this bright delicious cherry but soon just kind of turns into that nothing kind of benzoiny sugar smell like it's it's just it it fell flat and it lasted so little so uh overall i had a hard time smelling even the like the typical candy dna uh really struggled to even be able to smell it so maybe i just go anosmic to it loved the opening but unfortunately it lasted about five minutes and then it was gone sadly on me so maybe on clothing it would be better but this one's definitely in 17th place because it didn't last and it just became boring like the rest of its siblings so yeah I think the Prada candy line is not for me. I know some people love it. Not for me. The next cherry fragrance in 16th place is Banana Republic's Dark Cherry and Amber. Now this overall really, really beautiful fragrance. You have some cherry in there. There's a bit of florals. There's praline, amber, and cedar. So you get some woods. There's a bit of depth. It smells smooth. There's uh, just a richness to this. Uh, the problem with this one is that again the longevity was so poor. I love the bottle. Uh, this one it wasn't boring like it didn't turn boring. It was a really beautiful fragrance rather linear. It's basically cherry and wood. It's more of a like it's not a boozy cherry I didn't find. Just more of a woody cherry. It's a very smooth feeling. It'd be almost like cherry wood, like that kind of feel. So very lovely fragrance, but it lasted again about two hours and then I couldn't smell it at all. Uh, so this was a fail for me. I don't mind if if uh, the longevity isn't fantastic, uh, but, but that's like maybe like three, four hours, then I, I'm okay. But two hours, it's just a little too poor a performer for me. So yeah, that's dark cherry and amber. I wouldn't recommend this one. In 15th place is K. Alley's Invite Only Amber 23. Now, this is a beautiful fragrance. There is a slight cherry aspect to this one, but it's not super prominent. Uh, but cherry is definitely a note in this one. It has tobacco leaf, cherry, honey, chocolate, and hazelnut in the opening. And then there's cinnamon, there's rose, there's vanilla. It's a really beautiful fragrance. Unfortunately, uh, in this one, I actually find that the longevity is actually pretty good on it. Uh, I know a lot of people love this. The bottle is just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the fragrance is nice. Um, I like it better than I did last year for sure, uh, but it's still just not my favorite. Like the notes and the way it smells in the bottle is a little bit different than how it plays on my skin. So this is a really, really gorgeous fragrance. I would say that um, although the cherry is in there and you can smell it, I would say kind of the tobacco cinnamon rose 
is uh, what you're getting a little bit more. So the cherry's a little bit further in the background, but it's a beautiful, sensual, sexy fragrance. It actually reminds me just a tad, like it's it's not the same, but it gives me Noir Pour Femme vibes. So if you like Noir Pour Femme and wish you would have been able to find it when it was not discontinued, give this one a try because you might actually find that it kind of fits that same kind of spot for you as far as that scent profile. Invite only Amber 23 by Kay Alley in 15th place. Now in 16th place for cherry fragrances is Sweet by Lolita Limpica. Now this one again doesn't last long. It's a super synthetic cherry. Technically this is something that I would not normally like. It actually matches my shirt pretty good, that my lips. Uh, but I, I don't know what it is about this. It smells like powdered cherry uh, lick a stick. <laughs> and somehow I really, really enjoy that, especially at bedtime. So I've been finding that this is a great fragrance for just some sort of sweet little kick uh, just before going to bed. The longevity on this is poor. Like I said, smells synthetic. This one has uh, sour cherry and sugar in the opening. And then it's got cacao, angelica, and iris, which I definitely get the powder. So I get that iris, the angelica. Like I don't notice any sort of greenness in this one. And then it has musk and cashmere wood in the base. And I'm definitely getting kind of that musky base, but it's pretty linear and it smells to me like cherry lickistic powder. And for whatever reason, I really enjoyed that at bedtime. So Sweet by Lolita Lampica. It's in 14th spot, but not too bad. In 15th place, I have La Petite Robe Noir Hippie Chic or Legere version. Uh, this one, it's beautiful, it's bright, it's got that cherry that's very sim similar to the La Petite Robe Noir uh, original, uh, but this one has some raspberry in there as well. This one has a ton of notes, so I won't go into it, uh, but there's a bit of almond, there's a bit of that rose, definitely get the raspberry, and I get a little hit of cherry. More raspberry, I'd say, than cherry, so this one, the, the note isn't super prominent. Uh, this one's really nice, but it's quite light and airy. So for me, it's good more in the spring and summer. And in the spring and summer, I don't look to cherry as much. Like I, I wanted this one for the raspberry. So the cherry isn't majorly a standout in this one. And all it does is support the rest of the notes. But I wanted to mention it anyway. I don't know what I said for Legere, but this one's number 12. <laughs> This one's in 12th place, and it is Cherry of Cashmere by Le Les Princes du Golf. Uh, now, this is a gorgeous fragrance. The, this is a niche house. I'm going to leave the link. Uh, I'll leave the link for this niche house uh, and where you can get it. Um, it's from this place called Parfum Exquise in Montreal. Uh, I believe they ship worldwide. But these are beautiful niche fragrances, and they're like $135. So the price is excellent on them. Uh, my favorite is Emeraude Gourmand. Love that one. Uh, this one's really beautiful too. It's definitely cherry forward, but it's really kind of a, a bright, almost airy or effervescent cherry. It has cherry red fruits and mandarin in the opening. There's patchouli in the middle, and then it has a vanilla white suede and amber in the base. So this one is just beautiful. Like I said, it feels like kind of almost an effervescent cherry. Um, the red berries really help to support it. I find that this one is rather linear, although it does get a, a, a little bit spicier as it dries down. Um, this one is nice, but I honestly prefer kind of a little bit more of a boozy cherry. Uh, this would be probably not my favorite pick in this line, but they're, they are all really nice. I found that the longevity was moderate for this one. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my thought of this one. It's, it's nice, uh, but it, you know, there's just, I've got a lot of cherry fragrances in here and someone had to be 12th place. So in 11th place is Love Fest Burning Cherry 48. Now, uh, by Kay Alley. Now I've done a full length review on this one. This is a beautiful, beautiful kind of boozy burning cherry. Like it smells a little bit liquored. Uh, it's, it's 
it's the exact type of cherry that I absolutely am in love with. What this smells like to me is uh, similar to the opening of Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, very similar boozy kind of boozy uh, cherry. Uh, but as this dries down, it has more of a burning wood type flavor uh, that is very similar to By the Fireplace, in my opinion. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. If you love Tom Ford, but you just can't spend the money, this is a great uh, option for you. Plus, like, look at that bottle. Like, it's so, so beautiful. This one lasts a little bit longer than Tom Ford. Some people don't have a problem with the Lost Cherry lasting a long time. Uh, but anyway, this is way more affordable and it's a great option if you like that boozy cherry feel. This is gorgeous. Now in number 10th place is Cherry Delight by Be Layered. Now the reason why this one beat out Love Fest is simply because the performance on this one. This isn't complicated. It's basically the opening of Lost Cherry. It's kind of that tart boozy type cherry note and this is great for layering with other fragrances where you want a little kick of cherry like putting this with the only one by Dolce and Gabbana is just amazing if you've got by the fireplace and you've got B Layered's uh, Cherry Delight you can mix the two and you basically get Love Fest or it's similar right so I put this one with chocolate fragrances basically you can put it in to kind of amp up the sexiness of, of really any fragrance if you want to add the cherry it, it, it just it does it adds a sexy component to it so and it also kind of brightens up fragrances so love using this one for layering uh, yeah it's it's great it, the longevity is fantastic on this one it projects really well so even to buy something like this to boost up that top note of the lost cherry would be a great idea um, this this is really linear you're not getting a whole lot of the woods but it's definitely great in ninth place is La Petite Robe Noir Black Perfecto. This one you're definitely getting more of that cherry and it is the same kind of cherry that you get in the La Petite Robe Noir. This has an added component of some leather. So a lot of times people say that this is like La Petite Robe Noir's, uh, you know, like a, a black dress with a little black leather jacket on top. Um, I think this one's beautiful. It projects beautifully. I can remember wearing it and thinking, oh, it's not that strong. But then I kept on getting these beautiful whiffs of just the most delicate cherry. So I don't really consider this a super deep, dark, sexy fragrance, even though that's what, you know, the whole Black Perfecto kind of gives this idea of it being like super dark and sultry. It, I, I don't find it that. It's basically a beautiful cherry almond black tea fragrance. Uh, with some leather in it and it's bright it's not a boozy cherry at all uh, but then with that little hint of leather in there it's just absolutely gorgeous so love this fragrance number nine number eight spot was a real major shocker to me and it was cherry smoothie by Zara guys this fragrance is so so good now um, again similar to that top note in lost cherry but to me, this one is actually really similar to uh, Love Fest. Um, it's, it's really, really similar. There's a bit of a burning quality in this one, and I just think it's fantastic. This one held its own with any of the kind of lost cherry type uh, fragrances. In fact, I think that this one is at least as good as this one. Like, like they're really, really, really close. Uh, and this one smells to me closer to uh, Love Fest than it does Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. Uh, but it's got that similarity. So you've got that boozy kind of dark cherry. There's a little bit of a woody feel in this one. I just was so impressed with it. And the longevity was pretty good. And this gives me that boozy cherry vibe. Uh, but I definitely get a little hint of that woodiness somehow. It's creamy. It's beautiful. I'm so, so impressed with this. So again, it shows you how, you know, there's a mixture of niche and affordable. The affordable holds its own with all the niche ones as well. So love this fragrance. If you get a chance, go smell it. In seventh place is Cherry Rose Chocolate Patchouli. It says Cherry Rose on here. In some places it says Cherry Rose Chocolate Patchouli uh, by Melig Perfumes. 
The cherry in this one feels so delicate uh, to begin with. Just a beautiful kind of cherry rose fragrance. And then somehow the chocolate and patchouli start to come in and it gives it kind of a uh, spicy kick to it somehow. So it starts out light and airy and then as you wear it, it becomes a little deeper, darker, spicier, sensual. Uh, really decent longevity on this one, although it seems to come and go. So sometimes I can't smell it and then all of a sudden I'll get a beautiful whiff of it. So this is a, a really, really gorgeous fragrance. The cherry is a little more in the opening and it's a lighter cherry. It feels like an airy cherry. Like somehow it's the essence of cherry, not like sn sniffing actual cherries, more of a cherry essence. So it'd be almost like a, a fantasy rose that has a cherry-esque vibe to it. With the chocolate and the patchouli, the chocolate I think gives it just a slight hint of powder or there's a little bit of a powdery quality for the first little while uh, and then it gets a lot more deep and spicy uh, thanks to that patchouli. So I just think that this one is a really neat fragrance because it's a morpher. Uh, but yeah, Cherry Rose in number seven. And I've probably said the wrong number absolutely every time. I, I'm a disaster. Anyway, in number six position is Modeste Du by Afnan. I love this fragrance. I'm so glad I got it. It was relatively affordable. Like I think it was, I thought it was around 30, but I think it was closer to $50. This is a beautiful fragrance. Uh, definitely get that cherry, kind of cherry raspberry combination. I love cherry and raspberry together. This is a complete departure from the Love Fest cherry though, because there's no sort of burning sense in this one. This one is a lot more gourmand feeling. Some people have said it's a dupe for Le Nuit Trésor. I don't actually think it is. I think it's a deeper, darker version. Other people have said that this is uh, Le Nuit Trésor Le Parfum, which also has a cherry note. So that kind of fits a little bit better. I think this is gorgeous. It's got great longevity. And if you want that sexy kind of gourmand cherry, this one's great. But the cherry is definitely mixed with the other like the raspberry and the strawberry so it's not like the cherry is at the front of it they're kind of all mixed together but you definitely get a hit of it we've got five left so we're on our top five in fifth place is scandal by night now this is just decadence in a bottle definitely get that cherry the cherry is a lot more fresh it's paired with some pear which kind of helps it stay a little bit fresher uh, which is great because it's paired with honey, which is definitely a little bit more thick and syrupy, a little bit animalic. This is super sexy. So although the cherry is definitely prominent in here, it's not actually in the top notes. In the top, you have honey, bitter orange, and citruses. So that kind of amazes me. Definitely get that honey though, for sure. And then the middle notes are cherry, tuberose, orange blossom, pear, and nard Himalayan. And then the base is tonka bean, vanilla, patchouli, sandalwood, ambrette wood, and musk. And uh, yeah, this just smells like a, a honeyed cherry. The cherry, like I said, a little bit fresher with that pear. It's sexy, uh, it's flirty, it's delicious, it smells kind of edible, and I'm in love with this fragrance. In number fourth spot is La Rive's La Fleur. Now uh, this, I've talked about it a ton, it's supposed to be kind of an inspired version of Poison Girl by Dior. Um, this one, I just love it. The longevity is good. Basically, you're getting kind of a cherry orange almond fragrance. Um, I know that cherry isn't in the, uh, isn't in Poison Girl, but it's definitely in here and it's definitely present. Um, I, I love this fragrance. It's decadent. If you love cherry almond combinations, this is fantastic and it's like $12. It's in number four spot out of 17 fragrances and it's $12. So that speaks to how good it is. I'm just so impressed with this fragrance. I have enjoyed this one every time I put it on. I love it. I love it more and more. Uh, it's just decadent. I love the almond. I love the cherry. I love the orange in here. It just smells delectable, super sensual, super sexy. Uh, but somehow cozy and comforting at the same time. So love, love, love this one. 
Third spot goes to Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. So I had to include the actual Lost Cherry in this. Um, I love, love, love this fragrance. So the reason why it's a little lower than the other two is the longevity is poor on me. Uh, that said, it's absolutely stunning. There's a reason why I've got uh, three fragrances from Love Fest to Cherry Smoothie to Be, La Be Layered's uh, Cherry Delight that kind of are emulating this fragrance. It's because it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's this beautiful boozy cherry. There's a little bit of almond in it. It's absolutely beautiful. There's, it's definitely cherry centric. Uh, probably the most cherry centric fragrance on this list. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. If I had the Moolah, I'd just go ahead and buy this because it's beautiful. I even love the dry down. So I always used to think that I liked just the top notes, but I really, really enjoy the dry down with the woodiness that comes in into play with this one. So it's got cherry, there's almond, and liquor in the opening and then in the mid you've got more cherry plum rose and jasmine sound back uh, I, I it's just it's just boozy cherry almond goodness like so freaking amazing and then in the base you've got vanilla tonka bean peru balsam cinnamon benzoin sandalwood cloves cedar patchouli and vetiver so lots of woodiness but spicy woody it's absolutely gorgeous like it's such an amazing fragrance uh, the only thing is, is the longevity isn't great. So that's why it had to go down a few because yeah, that longevity really poor for the price. So yeah. Now the second one is an absolute delightful fragrance and so different compared to the rest of these. And it is called Habibi by Baizozo. This fragrance was a real surprise to me because uh, although you get the cherry, it smells like almost like an underripe tart cherry. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the neatest smell, uh, because it's really quite green. So it's green, it's fresh, but somehow it's really comforting. Like it's refreshing and, uh, kind of grounding somehow, uh, with that green component in it. So it actually says that it has green notes in the opening, which I totally get. Cherry, almond, and red currant leaf in the middle, and sandalwood and musk in the base. So a fairly simple composition. I would say it's rather linear, but it's just so classy. It's an elegant cherry. A lot of these cherry fragrances, you know, they smell super sexy, like overtly sexy, sensual. Uh, we attribute cherry to kind of that sexy, naughty vibe. So that's how a lot of these fit, like they fit into that category, some of them less than others. So for instance, something like this would be more flirty than sexy by far. Whereas you've got something like the Kay Alley La Love Fest, which is a lot more sexy. Uh, and quite a few of these have that kind of sexy vibe. This one is sexy without trying. This one is definitely a lot more classy. This takes cherry to a classy level like I've never smelled before. With that greenness, there's this fresh, kind of refreshing, almost spa-like vibe to this. Um, it smells classy. It smells classic somehow. Like I'm so, so impressed with this fragrance. It seemed to last a decent amount of time, but I can't really speak to that. But I'm, I'm super impressed with this. It's so shocking because I wasn't expecting to like this because when I first smelt it, I'm like, oh, this is so green. Uh, but somehow it just works and it's so, so understatedly elegant kind of. So this is the kind of fragrance that I imagine really, really rich people like old money rich who don't ever try to be rich would wear a fragrance like this. Just elegant, understated, and this is definitely more of a daytime cherry. So uh, yeah, somehow it's a super uber classy cherry. Absolutely love it. And I find it really grounding too. So super impressed with this one. In number one spot, to me, the Primo Cherry not because it is the most cherry centric, but I just plain love this fragrance. And it is BDK's Rouge Smoking. Oh my goodness. This one is definitely more of a sexy cherry again, but it is so, so good. And it's like somehow I find this one classy too. Uh, it's got kind of a tobacco vibe and I just, I'm just literally in love with this. Like I put it on 
and I just feel like really, really spectacular. Like I smell good, I look good, I feel good, I am good. <laughs> So, so gorgeous. So this one has cherry, pink, pepper, and bergamot in the opening, and then the middle has vanilla, heliotrope, and orange blossom. I don't really notice any particular floral in here. I can tell there's floral in here, but I would never say, oh, that's orange blossom. Then it has tonka bean, cashmere wood, white musk, ambroxan, labdanum, and violet. Um, what you get from this is kind of a sweet tobacco cherry fragrance. It's sexy, it's classy, um, the woman that wears this during the day puts this one on at nighttime and I can see actually you being able to go from one to the other quite easily for whatever reason. This is so uber sexy. It's rich, it's sophisticated, it's pretty linear like what you smell in the bottle is what you get on the skin the whole entire time but I am in love with this fragrance. To recap, number one is this one. So so good. Number 17 is Prada Candy Gloss. This one is as big of a letdown at the party as all of the Prada Candy sisters are. So this one is a total fail for me. But you know what? Honestly, the majority of these are really quite fantastic. You know, other than these two that I wouldn't recommend, the rest are really, really great fragrances. So yeah, love them. Uh, this was the biggest surprise because I never thought I would love a green cherry, but this is just so, so, so beautiful. So that is it. Uh, what is your favorite cherry fragrance? And if you've got a bunch of them, why don't you give me your top five? I would love to know. And so would everybody else. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.